Hey everybody, it's Kenneth again. Welcome back to the Shoegazer channel where we talk about effect pedals, exciting music gear, home production and more all around the beautiful noise and otherworldly soundscapes. In this video I want to give you some useful tips of how you can create this indistinct and far away vocal sound if you're a singer or a music producer. Atmosphere is one of the key elements in shoegaze, dream pop and ambient music as well, but also in modern pop music. A dreamy vocal sound can create this mystical feeling that goes under your skin. Especially in shoegaze and ambient music, you often hear this swirly and echoing vocal sound veiled in sonic clouds of reverb and sometimes also fuzzy and distorted guitar walls. In Germany, actually also in Berlin, they are kind of my neighbors you could say. We have a great band that is called Jaguar and I thought this video would be a very interesting topic to ask them how they actually mix their vocals in the studio. Because when you're listening to the first two Jaguar EPs, you can definitely hear that they make use of this indistinct and faraway vocal sound. So every now and then you will hear them talking how they mix their vocals and their music. So you can hear what an actual shoegaze band has to say about that topic and not just the YouTubing solo musician that I am. Don't make the same mistakes that I did, because when I try to achieve this faraway indistinct vocal sound, I always try to keep this clear pronunciation in my words and that's a very German thing to do. It's totally okay if not even intentional to conceal the lyrics that you're singing by mumbling them. So when you actually start to record your vocals for a dreamy song and you want to get that impression of being far away, just try to have some more distance to the microphone that you would usually have when you sing in your songs. And then of course, always listen back to what you just recorded. And if you can't feel the intended emotion that you're trying to achieve, try to change your pronunciation or try to sing a little more soft or a little more intense, depending on what the song is about. Try to act a little more bored, melancholic, dumb, or even a little crazy. Sometimes you can also get this out of focus vocal impression when you try to sing very, very soft and calm, even if you're very close to the microphone. And when I said try singing more softly, I actually mean try to sing more from your throat than from your stomach. I just try it for you. Let me sing the exact same words for you first from my stomach and then from my throat and you will recognize the difference. Can you hear me? Or can you hear me? So the second version is the throat. You're just pressing all the air into your throat and you kind of whisper it, but with a little more pressure. If you have a very deep voice and you want to try out this throat-based vocal style, then I really recommend to you checking out the vocals of Chino Moreno and his band Deftones. That's how I learned that singing style at least. If you need more vocal inspiration, check out bands like Slow Dive, Lush, The Stargazer Lilies, Ringo Death Star, Astro Bright or The Jesus and Mary Chain. Yes, and also My Bloody Valentine. It doesn't really matter if you sing actual words on a fantasy language, as long as everyone can hear your melody loud and clear. Because the melody is kind of an instrument and the most important thing when it comes to the vocals in music styles like shoegaze, dream pop and ambient. This is what Oemi says to this. Hi, we are Lemmy and Oyemi from Jaguar and we are happy that Kenneth asked us to answer some questions concerning how a typical Jaguar vocal track would look like for the two first EPs that we recorded that were like pretty full-blown shoegaze, I would say. When I sing a song doesn't mean that I wrote the vocal melodies first off. And also sometimes when Lemmy sings a song doesn't mean that he came up with the um, with the vocal melodies. It's usually like both of us or like either of us. We started to write a song, we rehearsed them or we played or wrote the song in the rehearsal space and then just started singing to it. Without any lyrics or something, we just made up like fantasy lyrics and just sang the melody first. I actually can't remember that I ever wrote a song in my life <laughs> where I had the lyrics before the vocal melody. There's already a few words coming in there. These are sometimes very fitting for lyrics. When we are in a rehearsal space and we are writing something and there's a melody coming up and I'm singing fantasy lyrics and there's already something that came up in my mind for lyrics, I try to write them down before I forget them again and then maybe I have like this one line 
where I'm like, oh cool, this is the first line maybe that I have for the song and this maybe dictates uh, the topic for the lyrics. Yeah, this is um, usually how it works. So we're in the studio now. We sang in our vocals, but what is happening now? So you recorded guitars, bass, drums, lots of effects on the guitars as well. So I would start with blending in the vocals just as much that you can hear them, but they don't stand out too much so that they become a part of this ambient soup that we are cooking. And now we need effects like EQ, compression, maybe some reverb, some delay. This is what Jay was saying about this. We double the vocals always, mostly if we triple them. One of them totally wet and two are just dry with EQs and then I just <laughs> stack it up and compress it till it hurts. Breathe bullets for example, I think mm. this is on the first EP. Yeah. <laughs> When you're listening to one of the older songs of us, you feel that there's like a ton of reverb on the vocals, but it's actually not. Maybe it's just it's it's just what you hear yeah. in the whole song because there's maybe a lot of a lot of reverb on guitars, yeah. and then you f it just feels like yeah. there is reverb on the vocals, but it's actually not. And if you have just three vocal tracks, it always feels like you know just there is a, some kind of room effect. If you just pen them, just like you know just three voices just left, right, center. And then it makes some kind of room effect. I guess it feels more natural, it feels more exciting. If it comes to background vocals, just, you know, just kill all the low frequency look. If there's too much de going on or too less, maybe. That's some kind of things you have to, to watch out. Trust your ears. So throwing reverb and delay on top of your vocals or in a separate bus that is fed with your vocals will help you to blur the contours and edges of your vocal sounds so they become a part of the overall sound in the mix. Here's a room, a separate delay and a separate stereo track where I sand in using these little sand switches here um, all the different tracks that I want uh, to have some extra room effect or some extra delay effect on. And also it will help you to give them a little more power. And as Lemmy and Doemi already told you, overdubbing your vocals with a new vocal track that you sing in, but that contains the same melody that will give you the impression of a wider vocal sound, a thicker vocal sound, and also a roomier vocal sound. So this way you have a very natural and one-of-a-kind stereo chorus room vocal effect that is only yours. You can use one extra layer or two or three, just try out what sounds best to you. I like recording two of these tracks and I pan them to the left and to the right. So I have the biggest stereo image that I can get. I'm sure that there are also many viewers who are probably pretty new to music production and others who are just exploring their first music abilities. It makes me super happy that you actually found your way here to my channel and that you want to explore the art of dreamy music. So I want to take a minute to thank and talk about today's video sponsor which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including writing, singing, music production, time management, photography, animation and more. Skillshare is a brilliant website to explore new skills, deepening existing passions and get lost in your creativity. If you're a total beginner or a professional, there's something interesting for everyone. For example, there is an in-depth course by music producer and audio engineer Brian Jackson called Ableton Live One, the first steps of digital music production. As I only use Ableton Live to produce my own music and think it's one of the best digital audio workstations, not only for recording but also for your live performance, I would highly recommend to you to get familiar with the software. You could use Ableton Live to create your very own vocal effects and trigger them with a MIDI effect pedal for example and use these live on stage. So this course could help you to get familiar with this. Brian Jackson is an Ableton certified trainer and explains all the fundamentals of Ableton Live 9 in this course. This course will make clear that using Ableton Live is much easier and intuitive than you actually might think at the moment. Another course that seems really interesting and fun is Toplining 101 
Melody and Lyrics in Songwriting by songwriter and vocalist Claire Dove. Claire already worked together with Grammy winning artists and producers and shares her personal insider tips on how to write songs with memorable lyrics and melodies that make you and your audience actually feel something. So by the end of her course you are going to have your very own song. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning which means that it's completely ad free and they are always launching new premium classes. And with an annual subscription it's not even $10 a month. So if you're curious and trying out Skillshare, the first 1000 people to use the link in my description below will receive a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. So now let's talk about a live situation. How do we create this far away indistinct vocal sound live on stage? Almost every time when I was on a shoegaze concert here in Berlin, the vocals of the singers were almost unrecognizable. I totally get that the main focus of these genres are the ambience and the guitars, but I think in the end it's super important that the audience can at least hear the melody that you're singing, even if they don't understand the words. Because melody is extremely important and the vocals in dreamy music are also an instrument, so you have to hear the melody loud and clear. Because on stage you always have completely new room acoustics and you have to work with these rooms. So you might expect it to get a roomy and far away vocal sound on stage. I would really recommend to you using vocal effect pedals that have at least reverb and delay on them. I promise this will take your live performance to the next level. I would recommend stump boxes like the TC Helicon Voice Live Play or the Boss VE20 or VE500. I actually just uh, got myself a new Boss VE500 and I think I will go a little more in depth with it in another video. If you don't want to use a specific vocal effect pedal, you can always use guitar pedals as well. But if you do this, make sure that you actually use an impedance transformer for your XLR cables that matches the output volume suitable for jack cables. Otherwise you will hear more hum and noise than the signal that is going into your microphone. So these were all my tips how you can create this far away indistinct vocal sound. In the end um, Lemmy will give you some of his most favorite VST plugins that he uses in the studio on vocals. I just want to say thank you for watching this video. If you like my content feel free to subscribe to my channel and also hit the little bell button to get notified every time I upload a new video. And also give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you in any way. This will also help the video to uh, get recommended to more people who might be interested in this topic. If you would like to see me how I record my vocals in my music, you can also jump over to my Patreon page. There I take you through my complete process of how I record my vocals in 50 minutes. So uh, feel free to check this out if you want. If you want to support me, um, you can also become a patron, download my music on my Bandcamp page or buy a t-shirt. Um, you will find the links below this video as well. If you know any cool effect pedals, plugins or recording techniques to get that indistinct vocal sound, please let us know in the comments below and yeah, I see you next time. See you later. I haven't done a lot of micro shift stuff and even tight stuff back then. I really used a lot of, you know, just the waves, <laughs> the race plugins and, and stock plugins of Samplitude. Is there a favorite reverb that you have now? I just really look for good room or ambience. There is a the Polaris from Audio Authority and perfect played by D Nice. I just always try to. Look out for the early harmonizer emulations from Eventide because they are doing a lot of good stuff for vocals, so skip on long reverbs.